on that level with serious rising. Now this is when you know it's a sacrifice. You can watch entertainment tonight, they'll never have shit black. It's always white people, sexy Brad Pitt. Sexy motherfucking Brad Pitt. You know, black people be doing shit all, all these movies and stuff, they never have nothing black. Then all of a sudden, man, oh, we're going to count down. They started doing, we're going to come back tomorrow and tell you some more shit about Aaliyah. We're going to come back tomorrow and tell you some more shit. And then they all the news are cupping his news corporations around the world. Like she, you know what I'm saying? Now here, that means that white people didn't even know about her until she was dead. It's like that Bruce Lee thing. Most motherfuckers didn't know about Bruce Lee until after Bruce Lee died. After they slayed that nigga ass. You see what I'm saying? That's when Bruce Lee became an international superstar. You see, right, that's true too, but also too, they slayed him, it was a ritual back in 1973. He died June 30th, 1973. They slayed that nigga in 73 because they knew that they was gonna drop into the dragon around September of 1973. And Enter the Dragon was a ritual movie to kill the black man. Don't let nobody fool you. Where the fuck you think they got Jim Kelly ass on the movie poster hanging up in them goddamn chains? And not only did they kill him, it wasn't a fucking nut to kill him. They had to drop him in fucking acid. And they ain't having two motherfuckers on the island that do goddamn kung, kung fu. Jim Kelly and fucking Bruce Lee and John Saxon, no, no fight motherfucking ass don't live. <laughs> didn't, he didn't take karate until four years after the damn movie. <laughs> then they make mockery. He gets his ass whipped in the beginning of the movie and Jim Kelly got to help him out. No, motherfucker, you got to make this move. Uh, well, he was one of them smart brothers. He knew that that damn bottom was gonna fall out with that black exploitation shit. So he got into real estate. But he ain't no, so Jim Kelly one of them smart motherfuckers. He said, no, this shit gonna fall by 79. Our shit gonna be through. So Jim Kelly stopped doing, dealing with him some damn real estate. Before the shit, but see, they knew, they, they said, no, we gotta get a motherfucker that look a certain way. We don't want no yapper cat hoto motherfucker up here kicking. We want a Jim Kelly with the real nice fucking afro. It's a fucking ritual. See what I'm saying? This is a ritual, cause I, cause, cause I, and they had to kill Jim Kelly, but they, it, it was a ritual, because look, the other movies, Chinese Connection, Fist of Fury, and well, Game of Death came out after that, but Chinese Connection, it was three of them before the Chinese Connection, Fist of Fury, Return, Return of the Dragon, which also aired after him, but it was completed. But uh, uh, Chuck Norris became an international superstar because of that. But the first one where they put the most amount of money was when Warner Brothers and them picked the shit up. And they said, this is opportune time to do a fucking ritual. This was right in the heat of the Watergate shit. It's a goddamn nigga done blew the damn whistle on the motherfucker up there. You know that damn nigga found him in the hotel and shit and called his master and ain't work a day and died two years ago in the bus bus to Georgia. Never got a job again, the guy that blew the whistle on the shit. But it was right during the heat of Watergate. And they said, wait a minute. They took Jim Kelly out and they said, wait a minute. He's going to become an international superstar when they take him out. They had already made this movie and it was a ritual to kill the black man. And the spirit told me this shit back in 73. It told, this, this shit has bothered me for a fucking damn near 28 years. It bothered me. And when, and when, the, when, the, when, the, when the movie came, when they, did, they digitally remastered the shit in 97 and I was going to get a copy, the spirit said, don't get that shit. That was a ritual to kill the fucking black man. You see? So, they do these things. That's why the black man always dies on the, on the, on the other movies, on, on all the sci-fi movies, until they wanted black people to start saving them. Then they start living. Like when the black movies is pitch black. Only, only motherfuckers lived on that movie was two black people and one little white girl. 
You see what I'm saying? That one little white girl, but they had to kill the other white girl just to let her live. I said, that was a good ass movie. This man, hell, only two motherfuckers live in the movie. One more, that, 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 that Imam, Alhamdulillah, and the black man. Yeah, but he learned quick. You don't live with white motherfuckers sooner or later. And the only reason why he, they both lived because the thing was, the things on the planet was black. When the sun went into eclipse, that's when the melanin realm starts. And the only one could see him was the one with the third eye, the black man in the movie, Pitch Black. It's a good-ass movie. That's one you need to buy and put on the shelf. He was black. His name is um, Ben Diesel. He's a black guy. He's a black guy. He, he's, 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 he's a black guy. Now, but anyway, they do these particular sacrifices in these particular movies and stuff. They do this particular sacrifice, and when she completed, they didn't pick her for Queen of the Dam. Look, this, this book hit Ann Rice's top shit. Now, that means they got people all over Hollywood just trying to be that. Ann Rice and they ain't going to put no newcomer, Johnny Come Lately, or unknown in a major movie. Here's a bunch, she got one little movie, Romeo is bleak, Romeo must die, and then the next thing you know, she's, doing, she's trying to complete the Matrix thing, but my point is, is, why the hell you think all of a sudden this motherfucker getting all the goddamn work? You know, niggas got to work hard for years before you see him in some shit. All of a damn sudden, you know, she's been out for a while, but still, yes, she's basically unknown. Ann Rice and they ain't gonna put them in the movie now unless it's a sacrifice. Now the damn movie is gonna be a major ritual. This is how this shit goes. This is, this is how this, this, this thing goes. By the way, if you want to uh, invoke this Zara band, the ones I was calling on, we got them in the front cover of this particular book, this, this uh, Ark of Sophist magazine. But I'm going to go in that in a few minutes because all of a sudden, you got to stick around for this. Because I know we've been coming for years saying this shit here is up. But let me tell you something. They got some fools, some, some, some fools in the spirit world that went hog wild about a month ago. And these are hog wild, but ain't who you think it is. They, they went hog wild. Start fucking niggas up. You see what I'm saying? And they wasn't fucking up the messed up niggas. They was fucking with niggas on our side. I'm going to this stuff here. But they hit my ass good. Now I knew so, I said, they hit me good, but for about an hour, I was like, look, okay, goddamn it. I'll go ahead and die. Anything to get this motherfucking pain off my ass. <laughs> and then they, and, 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 and what, what they did with me was so severe until I got through one night because I had these spirits to work on me. But then when it started healing, they had done so much damage to me until in order for me to get through the night of healing, I had to go get some shit that they give to cancer patients to relieve the damn pain. My, my aunt, you know, she, I got an aunt that's a goddamn pharmacist and shit. She, she the kind of motherfucker, the white man say, we gonna put your head on this skateboard. Your, your body fucked up. We gonna put, cut your head off and put it on this skateboard. She's so scared of death, she'll go, go ahead on, doctor. I just have to have my little son kick me around and roll me on them skate on them skate on that skateboard. So she uh, she she had a little cancer in her ass, benign. And we say, Aunt Jane, we got all kind of herbal remedies to get rid of that. No, I think I'll go with the chemotherapy with the doctor. Hey, that a bitch. You got a benign sister on your ass. We say, Aunt Jane, it ain't nothing. But see, only here is cancer. Uh, we can cure that shit. You can get somebody to massage that shit out. It's benign. No, I think I'll go with the damn doctor. When they had to get that shit cut off her ass in, in, in fall of 1997, she didn't get out of the fucking hospital until fall of 1998. They were like, this motherfucker got one of the best insurance packages in the world. So her ass became a major goddamn event for them niggas because they kept her in there until they damn near almost killed her until I had to do a ritual to get her out. But anyway... In order for me to get through this shit that they give me, I had to go get some shit they give cancer patients. Because I said, no, all that other damn massaging and positive thoughts ain't working. I need some straight up narcotics for this motherfucker right here. Because <laughs> these niggas fuck me up. I, they roll on my ass. 
shit over there for me. I said, my shit is fucked up. And it's raining outside. I said, I call all you up to bring it. And all you say, well, I'll get there when I get there. But right now, I'm a little busy. I said, it's raining outside. Do you have anything for me? Because I'm fucked up. Couldn't sit. I had to walk around. Just walk around all fucking day. He said, um, as a matter of fact, we got some shit called Oxycontin. He said, but you, he said, you can't, you gotta swallow it, you can't bite into it. He said, crackers is buying it and biting into it, and it gets you, it's just like crack. You be, you just be fucked up. Yes, yeah, so he said, you can't bite into it. You gotta swallow this shit, because if you bite into it, you're gonna be high as hell. You're gonna go to another planet. But I said, well, you gotta bring that shit on. So that shit, but man, I'm telling you, they roll on my ass. They roll on my ass, boy. I swear to God, they, they had me for about an hour. I was like, fuck it. Just, just fuck it. Just come home and take me. So, but, so it's some dangerous shit, but we're going to go into that in a few minutes. Now, let's go to, let's get into this. Uh, let's get into this. Um, uh, okay. Okay, let me get into this one last thing. Now, they got this racism summit that they had last week down in South Africa. But yet, all of a sudden, America got to pull out of it because the racism summit said that Zionism is racism. So what they're telling you that Israel is the 59th state and an invention of America and under no circumstances does anything go against Israel that ain't America.